When I say set membership, it seems like a very fancy title, but what we're just referring to is what do the things inside sets look like? Now, we've started our definition on sets as a set being a collection of objects, and the objects are called elements of the set. Now, those objects can be absolutely anything. Now, we've been strict up to now, simply looking at sets of numbers, whether natural numbers, real numbers, integers, we've stuck to sets of numbers, but I don't want you to get caught up thinking that a set only consists of numbers. So let's look at some different sets. Here I've got two sets. A is a set and B are sets of ordered pairs. We've seen that in the Cartesian product of sets when that was defined earlier on in the series. Then we saw that we can have a set that is ordered pairs. So sets can have anything as elements. These sets have ordered pairs. But what I want to look at in this section is I want you to get a feeling of what the elements of the set, what would they look like? Now we can't write down all the elements. This set x, y ordered pairs where x is equal to y. But we can generate some elements. 1, 1 is going to be an element of a. Minus 2, minus 2 is an element of a. 0, 0 is an element of A. So we can get a feeling for what the elements of A looks like. Those can be any numbers. Remember, if we don't specify what X and Y are, we're assuming they can real be real numbers. So it could be pi and pi. Those are all elements of A. Now, I cannot list all the elements, but I've got a feeling for what they look like. Look at the next one. B is a set of ordered pairs where the X portion is bigger than the Y one. Well, then I know 5, 1 must be an element of B, because this one must just be bigger than this one. Minus 7, minus 10. Now you've just got to think about a, this one a bit. Is minus 7 bigger than minus 10? Yes. It's to the right of the number line. So that's an element of B. Naught minus 1 is an element of B. 10 naught is an element of B, as long as that first entry is larger than the second one. So those are sets of ordered pairs. We get other types of sets, sets of polynomials. Now, if we look at a set of polynomials, here I've got a set of polynomials defined. R, it's polynomials where the A value is equal to 4. So B and C, A, B and C are all real numbers. A is 4, B and C can be anything. So 4x squared minus 2x plus 1, that's an element of R. Sorry, not the real numbers, the set R. 4x squared plus 7x minus pi. That's an element of R. Just 4x squared, is that an element of R? Well, if the B and the C portions are 0, yes, 0 is a real number, so that's an element of R. So this gives us an idea what those polynomials look like. This next one, I've got the C portion equal to 0. So 2x squared minus 3x, that's an element of s. 4x squared, is that an element of s? Well, there's no restriction on a and b as long as the c portion is 0, so that's an element of s. So any polynomial for which the constant term is 0, those are quadratic polynomials, those are elements of s. But now I'm saying quadratic polynomials, but we're not told that a is not allowed to be 0. So it's not necessarily restricted to quadratic polynomials. 4x is also element of s. 0 is an element of s. All right. So that's when s has polynomials as entries. What about sets with matrices as entries? I've got a set A here with 2 by 2 matrices where A and D are both equal to 1. Well, some examples. And at this stage, if you do not know what a matrix is, a matrix is simply rows and columns of numbers. So ordered rows and columns. These matrices are two by two, meaning they've got two rows and two columns. You can spend some time looking at matrices, but if you have, then you can look at these. If you're not familiar with matrices yet, then come back to this section, this part. All right, so A and D is equal to one. So this means my other entries, B and C, could be anything. So that's an element of A. 1, 7, minus 10, 1, that is also an element of A. So that's what the, those matrices look like. B, I don't tell you these, or I tell you these entries are 0, and those two entries could be anything. 
So 12 minus 9, 0, 0. That's an element of B. 0, 0, 0, 0 is also an element of B. So as long as that second row is zeros, that's what my elements of B look like. So let us look at the concept of a subset again. We did this when we looked at sets earlier on, but let's just do it, look at subsets when we've got a sets that are a little bit weirder. If I look at R2, now that's what we call all the ordered pairs on the Cartesian plane. All the ordered pairs X, Y, where X and Y are real numbers. That's R2. Now, I'm defining a new set B. All the X, Y's, ordered pairs, where X is less than or equal to Y. So if I had to look at that one, some examples, just to get a feeling for what it looks like. The X is less than or equal to Y. So 2, 3 will be in B. 0, 1 will be in B. But also 5, 5 will be in B because the X is less than or equal to the Y. So now my question is, is B a subset of R2? The answer is definitely yes, because every element of B is made up of real numbers. So every ordered pair in B is an ordered pair. So B is a subset of R2. Is R2 a subset of B? And the answer is no. The way I show it, I need to find something in R2 that's not in B. Well, how are we going to look at it? We're going to look at a number 5, 2. There's an ordered pair. Now, there's an infinite number. I just chose one because that's all I need. I need one ordered pair that's in R2 and not in B. 5, 2 is in R2. But 5, 2 is not in B. Why? Because 5 is not less than or equal to 2. So R2 is not a subset of B. Let's look at some more. Here I've got P and Q, ordered pairs again. P is the set of ordered pairs where the X and the Y portion are greater than 0. So that's basically everything here in the first quadrant. Where Q consists of ordered pairs, when I multiply them, I get something greater than or equal to 0. What would that look like? Well, if I multiply two positive things, I get a positive. If I multiply two negative things, I get a negative. If I multiply zero with anything, I get zero. So it's the first and the third quadrants and the axes. So visually we can see that P seems to be a subset of Q because every element of P should be in Q. Now the question here is, show that P is a proper subset of Q. So just remember, a subset means every element of the first set is also in the second set. A proper subset means there's still something in the second set, so in Q, that's not in P. So algebraically, how are we going to show that? Well, I'm going to say, let x, y be an element of P. Because I need to show that everything in P is also in Q. Then I know that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. So I can conclude that x times y must be greater than 0. So to be in Q, x times y must be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, that x, y is an element of Q. So I can conclude that P is a subset of Q. So that's a start. I've got the first part. Now I need to find something in Q that's not in P. Well, visually we can see, let's just choose something over here. Minus 1 minus 1 is an element of Q. Since minus 1 times minus 1 gives me something positive. But minus 1 minus 1 is not an element of P. So then I can conclude that P is a proper subset of Q. So everything we've done with sets, we can look at in terms of sets of numbers. We can look at in terms of sets of ordered pairs or polynomials or matrices or any other objects. All right. So the last one. Let's have two matrices here. I've got a matrix A where the A and the B, as long as A and B are not zero. All right. Matrix B I've got the property that A times D is equal to B times C. So let's just get a feeling for this. Number A is, or matrix A, of set A is not too difficult, because as long as I don't have zeros in the numerator, I'm good. Set B, let's just look at some things in set B. Some elements of B. This one times this one must be equal to this one times this one. So if they're the same, 1, 2 times 1, 2. That will be in B. 
that makes sense. But I can also have 3 times 4 and 2 times 6. That both gives me 12, so that's an element of B. What about if I've got 0 somewhere? If I've got a 0 there, and a 4, and a 0, and a anything, that's also an element of B, because 0 is equal to 0. All right, let's go back to my set A. I, or my question, I want to show that B is not a subset of A. So I need an element of B that's not in A. Now, A tells me these two can't be 0. Now, strategically, I've already got one example that serves as my counterexample. If not, you'd have to think of something. Can I generate an element of B for which those two are 0? Or one of them, at least, is 0. So I've got 0, 0, 3, 4 as an element of B. And if you want to explain it, since 0 times 4 is equal to 0 times 3. But 0, 0, 3, 4 is not an element of A. Because both those entries are 0. So therefore I can conclude that B is not a subset of A. So in this section I just wanted you to be aware that sets are not just made up of numbers. We can have ordered pairs, ordered triplets, ordered intuples. We can have polynomials, functions, any types of functions. We can have a set of trig functions. We can have a set of matrices of any size. So expand your thinking about sets so that they can include many different objects. And that will become very valuable at a later stage if you look at vector spaces.